Peace, peace. This is your host, Eli Shalom, and this is the Cosmon teachings in the words of Jehovah and his angel ambassadors from the Cosmon Bible of Waspi. And the topic of discussion today is called The Rise and Fall of the Nation of Israel. This documentary explains when the Israelites left Egypt and established themselves in the Senya, in the Jordan region. In the Bible, it states the Israelites spent 40 years in the wilderness, but here in Owaspi, it states they spent 400 years upholding the peace policy of non-resistance established by Moses before falling to the pagan practice of surrounding tribes around 1100 BC. For 400 years, the Israelites had no kings but chief rabbis upholding the Mosaic laws, which were two laws, the written law and the oral law. The written law was called the Leviticus law, but the oral law was given orally from mouth to ear by the angels themselves in the inner temple. This was upheld until about 1100 BC, when the Israelites began to choose kings after the manner of the heathen nations. Now, in the Bible, it states the Israelites spent 40 years in the wilderness, and two years after leaving Egypt, Israel is commanded to go to war, as stated in Numbers chapter 1, verse 1 through 3. The problem here is that the Exodus took place around 1546 BC. And two years after that, Israel goes to war is an historical error. The Israelites did not begin to choose kings and partake in war until around 1200 to 1100 BC. There is no reference to the Israelites for three to 400 years from 1546 BC to around 1200, 1100 BC. In the inscriptions of Merin Patah, the Amana letters, the time of Amenhotep III, the Beth Shel Stella, during the time of Seti I, all these inscriptions show Hebrews warring against other tribes. But prior to that time, the last mention of the Hebrews was during the Middle Kingdom, which was around 2000 BC, when they entered Egypt peacefully, as the inscription shows on Kenemhotep II tomb, to around 1546 BC during the so-called expulsion of the Hekka So from 1546 to around 1100 BC is another three to 400 years where there was no written account by the Hebrews. They were upholding the peace policy of non-resistance established by Moses. Amenahed IV, the historical evidence of any invasions in Canaan, as described in the Bible with the conquest of Joshua, would have to be attributed to the 18th dynasty pharaohs or the pharaohs of the new kingdom from 1550 BC to 1292 BC. This would have been the time period Israel would have conquered Canaan, but according to historical evidence, it was the 18th dynasty pharaohs that led campaigns in the regions of Canaan during this time period and established strongholds in those regions. Now in the Owaspi, there's a section called the basis of the Ezra Bible. Chapter 1 verse 1 through 22 it states, In the time of Moses, the people of Arabinia worshipped many gods and lords, whose high heavenly captain was Osiris. Four chief gods were under him. There were Baal, Ashtaroth, Dagon and Ashdod. There were 72 other gods also known to mortals. Verse 2. When the Israelites traveled forth amidst the different tribes, they were beset to know what lord or what god they worshipped, and by what lord or what god they were led forth. Verse 3. The light in wisdom and words came to Moses to say to the nations, Alice, his name whom we worship, man dare not utter. Verse 4. Within the communion families, were certain signs and passwords belonging to the different degrees. There were also oral rules of life and worship, but they were kept secret from the multitude. But the instructions of the communion fathers to the families was by this method made to harmonize all the people. Verse 5. For general behavior, Moses gave ten commands, which were not only made public, but were incumbent on the communion fathers to teach orally to their respective families. The followings are the commandments thus taught, that is to say, verse 6, I am the I am that brought thee out of Egypt, verse 7, thou shalt have no gods, no lords, but the I am, verse 8, thou shalt not make any image of the I am out of anything that is in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the waters, verse 9, thou shalt not bow down thyself before idols nor images, nor anything having the form of anything in heaven or on the earth or in the waters. Verse 10, Thou shalt not speak my name in public, for I will not hold him guiltless that give it to adulterers and lovers of evil. 
verse 11. Remember the sacred days and keep them holy. Six days shall thou labor, but the seventh day is the Shabbat, the Sabbath. Verse 12. Honor thy father and mother. Verse 13. Thou shalt not kill any living thing. Verse 14. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Verse 15. Thou shalt not steal, nor bear false witness, nor convent anything that is another's. Verse 16. In those days it so happened that one, Koitha, an Egyptian woman, a Suez, went into the lodge at noon, no person being within the lodge except herself. Now while she was examining the remnants of shoe, of shoe bread and basins and the candlesticks, a voice spoke to her saying, Touch not these, they are sacred. But the woman, knowing it was a spirit, said, If I tell what I have heard, I will be accused. For was it not the multitude of Circes that brought the plagues on Egypt? Verse 17. Again, the voice spoke, saying, I will give thee the signs and passwords of the high fathers, that they may also know that thou knows. Now, thereupon the spirit told her the secrets. And he likewise said, Say thou to Moses, the I am Seth, and Moses will wander at thy speech. Behold, these implements are sacred. Hide thou them by day, for they who have spirit perception, perceiving them, will obtain the signs and passwords. Verse 18. The woman, Koitha, did as commanded, and Moses commanded the workmen to make a tabernacle, a model or image of a place of worship, portable temple. So that's what the tabernacle is, a portable temple. And the sacred implements were kept within said the tabernacle. And this was the corporeal base of the Ark of Bond, a locality in the Etherean heavens by which the light of the second heaven reached the earth to Moses and his people in the pillar of cloud by day and of light by night. Verse 19, the secret ceremonies commanded vegetable diet for fathers, prophets, seers, and trance subjects. And many of Koitha's people followed their examples. After some years of experience, those who fasted from flesh murmured, saying, What have we gained for our sacrifices? Verse 20. So they broke their fast by hundreds and by thousands, and there came by their camps numberless birds, and they caught and killed and ate them freely. But being unaccustomed to such diet, they were taken with fever and died. Upward of 60,000 of them, men, women, and children, and the place was called Kabarath Hatava, the place of lusters. So here it said that the secret ceremonies commanded vegetable diets. Verse 21, in the year 3269 BK, BK meaning before Cosmon, 3269 BK is roughly around 14, 1300 BC, during the time of the New Kingdom. The Israelites began to marry with the Canaanites, who were under the control of Baal. Verse 22, Ashtaroth, whose dominion extended jointly between Baal over western and southern Arabia, sent spirit emissaries to the handsome woman of Canaan, and by impression led them into the camps of the Israelites to tempt the young men. For by these means did the heathen gods determine to destroy the worship of the great unseen. And many of the Israelitish young men were tempted by the beauty of of the heathen women and thus took them for wives and said wives brought with them their own familiar spirits who were slaves to Baal and Ashtaroth. So Herod states that Ashtaroth inspired the Canaanite women to interbreed with the Israelites so they could overthrow the doctrine of the great spirit or the creator and replace it with the heathen doctrine of the surrounding tribes. And you can read that in the Bible where it talks about the Israelites mixing with the Canaanites. Now, God's book of Esquire, chapter 10, verse 8 through 11, it states, Of the faithists of Western Arabia, who for the most part call themselves Israelites, the two branches still remain, those who lived under the oral law and those who lived under the written law. The latter were called Leviticans, that is, hangers on and of imperfect flesh and spirit. Verse 9, the Leviticans were not scrupulous as regardeth war and the preservation of their seed. And in consequence of their sins, they brought great shame upon the faithists in general. And the Leviticans' examples were evil, and they gained in numbers faster than the Orvalites. The Leviticans worshipped the great spirit under the names Lord, which is Aduna, and God, Allah. Verse 10. 